Hey everybody, how's it going? I'm Eric. I'm Ty. And we are Shantoto Cast, and I have no idea what the hell's going on today. So, uh, well first of all, our, uh, sadly this is the last episode. Yeah. I thought, I thought we'd throw that one out there. Uh, as some of you may know, uh, I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV, the critically acclaimed MMORPG that currently has a free trial up to level 60 with unlimited playtime and includes the first award-winning expansion, Heaven's Ward. And I decided to get into cosplaying Final Fantasy XIV, which number one is already a lot of money out of my pocket. And number two, to make sure that my cosplay is as authentic as possible in celebration of Endwalker, I'm going to the moon. Oh. Yeah. Okay, uh, well, let me just say, let me know if you see any uh, teddy bears up there. Uh, there's rabbits. There's canonically rabbits on the moon in Final Fantasy. Gotcha. See, I, I want you to know that there is canonically rabbits on the moon in Final Fantasy. Okay, cool. Please see, I, I, was, know. I was making an old, like, internet reference, mm. and you're making a good reference. Bears? So, Desmond the Moon Bear? No idea what you're talking about. Okay, there's, like, oh, one person out there who's going to get it, uh, and that, yeah. that's okay. I'll, I'll leave the joke in for one person. Yeah. Anyway, uh, Ty, why don't you explain what's going on today? So we're doing a new little segment, a new little, like... Because, like, a lot of our episodes recently has just been us kind of explaining stuff or, like, kind of... I don't want to say more serious, but kind of dry episodes that yeah. we're explaining in the game or something. Or, hey, here's why you should play. Uh, so I want to do something kind of silly. So I made a series called Flavor... Or Taste of the Cards? Mm -hmm. Flavor of the Cards? So where we just kind of talk about card flavor. Okay. Um, so something that our viewers may not know is Eric... Hasn't played that many Final Fantasies. Okay, well, I've played some. You've played 13, 7. No, I, so I've played, uh, let's see, 13, 7, uh, 10. I okay. played 11 for a little bit on a friend's account. Okay, which ones have you played to completion? That's where we have issues, <laughs> because I have a curse where every <laughs> fucking time I'm about to finish a Final Fantasy game, something happens to my save data. Uh, I've had two PlayStation 2 memory cards wiped. I've had my PSP lose my Final Fantasy VII data. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think the only f game you beat was Dissidia, right? I've beaten Dissidia, yeah. Uh, which I guess doesn't really count. It, yeah. Um, I do love Dissidia games, though. Yeah. Um, we, we don't have a lot of Dissidia flavor. Because I... Like, we're going to be taking this one game at a time. So yes. I'm going to talk about ones that I particularly know very well about. Yeah. And then we're going to move on to other ones later. We're going to try to focus on one game an episode. Yeah. Um, but, like... Uh, yeah, I've never finished most Final Fantasy games because every goddamn... I, I'm so salty, but, like, I've lost data for 10, 12, 7, 13... Well, okay, FF13, someone stole my third disc off yeah. from my Xbox. Also, I found a third disc for Xbox, by the way. No I, way! I found mine, yeah. No, okay. Uh, I'll next time I'm by, I'll swing. I mean, it doesn't control. matter. My yeah. dad deleted the data off my Xbox uh, anyway, but, so I yeah. restarted the game on PC. Whatever. Yeah. But anyway. me, on the other hand, I have played to completion one, two, three, four, five, seven, uh, ten. I think I got to the last boss. Um, uh, thirteen. I got to the last boss, and then fifteen. And I'm playing through fourteen right now. I actually. To all you MMO heads, I, I actually just got to Endwalker, or not Endwalker, uh, Shadowbringers. Uh, I might be able to make it to Endwalker before it launches. Loving it so far. Absolutely adoring it. Oh, oh my god. I, it is so good. <laughs> I uh, I switched off controller with a buddy playing 9. So oh, I, play, okay. I played a lot of 9 as well. Yeah. And then for spinoffs, I, play, I played the Chocobo game that's on DS. I've played Dissidia, Duodecim, uh, NT, mm -hmm. uh, Opera Omnia. Yep. Um, oh, I play a lot of... We both play the, a lot of Opera yeah, Omnia. The first Crystal Chronicles, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance, Final Fantasy Tactics Advance 2, and Theorhythm. And I'm trying to think if there's any other ones that I'm missing out. Oh, uh, Explorers was the other one. Mm. Because that's the one that, like, whenever we get a new card for, everybody's like, what's FFEX? I'm yeah. like, don't worry about it. It wasn't <laughs> very good. But... So I played a lot of Final Fantasies, um, and I'm continuously playing more Final Fantasies. I'm trying to beat all of them before 16 comes out, as a lot of people are. Um, so I thought I'd just... For the people who are playing this specifically for the card game or just the flavor for Final Fantasy VII or Final Fantasy VIII or something, I'm here to kind of round out your knowledge and kind of explain some of the flavor on some of the cards. Yeah, you're, well, you're um, more of an RPG guy than I am anyway. Yeah, I definitely Like, am. I play more FPS, RTS, and I just kind of yeah. branch out occasionally into RPGs. Yeah, so and I I'm, play RPGs in fighting games. Like, yeah. that's, like, it's a religion. Right. It is at this point. But, <laughs> yeah, so this is uh, Taste of the Cards. Uh, so I'm going to kind of explain uh, um, the flavor behind certain categories. And we're going to start off 
with what is easily my favorite Final Fantasy game, Final Fantasy Tactics Advanced. Okay. Uh, I talked about this on another podcast, but I love this game. I think it was my. I think it's the first Final Fantasy I ever beat. It's the first Final Fantasy that I like played religiously. And when part of the reason I wanted to get into this game is when we got into it was uh, Opus Three, and they were revealing Opus Four at the time, and FFTA cards were in Opus Four, and I was like, we gotta keep playing this, um, or at least that was my motivation for myself. Right, like, I gotta keep playing this. Um, so we'll, we'll start off with the basic story, of Final Fantasy Tactics. Sure. So you haven't played any of it, if I'm correct, or you played the first I played. Five I played the first like five hours of Tactics, like Tactics. Tactics one. Okay. But not Tactics Advanced or Advanced okay. Two. So all right, this is just straight up not. Well, it's it's the same world as Tactics, but it's not related whatsoever. I think it takes like place either like 200 years in the future or the past. Of tactics, it, which either is way, very weird. there's a distant, there's a 200 year delta. Uh, yeah, the basically. So okay, <laughs> so the basic story uh, of Final Fantasy Tactics Advance is that there's four friends: Marsh, Ritz, Donald, and Mew. So okay. those names should sound familiar. Yeah. Uh, and then they kind of get isekai'd into the world of Final Fantasy. Okay. So basically, Mute, whose mom is dead and his dad is drunk, um, finds a book uh, that's like basically Final Fantasy, and then they all get pulled into it. So so this is uh, Game Boy Advance, right? Yeah, this is Game Boy Advance. I thought World of Final Fantasy was on PS4. Boo! 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 <laughs> Bad joke. No, hey, yeah. look, the hey, notes say World yeah. of Final Fantasy. Yeah. It yeah. was... So they get, I had to. So basically, uh, all the characters have something, like, I don't want to say wrong with them, but something that they don't like it about themselves. So Marsh okay. is a new kid. He doesn't have any friends. Um, Ritz has white hair. <laughs> that's it. Uh, and she hates it. <laughs> like that, that's literally... That's so Don, silly. Yeah, so Mute, as I mentioned before, his mom's dad, his dad's a drunk. And then uh, Donid, whose Marsh's brother, is uh, disabled. He can't use okay. his legs. Okay, I, I have to I have to touch on this. Like, uh-huh. Ritz, is, Ritz is a woman, right, girl? Yeah. yeah. Every, all these other characters get, like, deep development, and they give her something so vain well, and, like, hollow as, I don't like my hair. So I do... Please tell me there's more depth to that. Th- they're... Yeah, on the surface level, there isn't. I'll I'll say my theories later on. Okay. I'll, I'll talk about my theories later on. But so basically, the idea is that they all get transported into this fantasy world where they get what they want. So Marsh ends up getting friends. Uh, Ritz has pink hair, which he always wanted. Uh, Donnie can walk again, which this is going to be a big thing later. And Mute uh, has his mom, Queen Remedy, and he's also royalty. His dad's judge master, like he has everything that he wanted. Um, so the story is that Marsh wants to go back to, like, the original world. However, none of his friends want that. So it's him kind of fighting against his friends, like, trying to convince them, like, hey, we gotta go back home because we have families. And uh, there's four crystals, a recurring theme in Final Fantasy, that are kind of keeping the world together. And he has to s- find the crystals, destroy them, etc. So that's the basic story. Like, that's the very non-spoilery okay. basic story. Okay, I dig it. Um... So we'll just hop straight into it with uh, the boy. Uh, so that's Marsh. Marchy. Uh, Marchy. Marsh is the new kid at school, quickly makes friends with Ritz and Mute after a snowball fight at his school. Mute brings a book later called The Grimoire he found in Marsh's how or er, to Marsh's house, and then they get Isekai'd into uh, the world of Final Fantasy. Okay. Or Ivalis specifically. So the first card is the three drop marsh from Opus right. Four. So three drop marsh. Uh, forward job as clan leader. I'll explain that in a minute. And he's category FFTA. Uh, dull one active forward. Choose one forward blocking marsh. Deal a damage equal to the power of the dull forward. So, right off the bat, he's a fire card, uh, which like generally to the lore of the story doesn't super matter. Like he's not given fire stuff right away. Like nothing like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then. It's also worth it to point out that Ritz and Mute are different colors. Okay. Because Ritz is wind and Mute is ice. Sure. Um, Ritz is kind of makes sense in flavor, which I'll explain. Mute, kind of not. But um, once again, I'll kind of get to that. Sure. Um, so, but the fact that they're all different colors kind of shows how they're in different situations. Okay. And, yeah, so I think that's just the general indicative. Uh, okay. I think probably fire is kind of like a protagonist color in a way, you know? Yeah. So, to me, at least, it makes sense. And then, job clan leader. So, Marsh, with his friend Montblock, form a clan called Clan Nutsy. Um, and Ivalis is basically, like, run by clans. Clans are basically guilds, okay. in a way. So, they get together, they fight, they decide things, they protect towns, etc., etc. So, um, Mar- clan leader, once again, we'll dive th- a bit more into that. So... Uh, Marsh's effect reflects on the different mechanics in FFTA, and this one seems... Or the different Marshes have different effects that 
reflect different mechanics in FFTA. This one seems to reflect combo attacks. So okay. combo attacks in FFTA is an attack that's used for uh, JP, which is a resource you get for KOing units. And then uh, multiple characters will do one attack on one uh, on an enemy. Okay. So if you have multiple, they all fight him. They do one fancy animation. It can't be blocked. It can't be dodged. It has a 100% hit rate. It's very cool. Neat. Um, yeah. And so combo attacks are expressed through dulling the other forward to deal damage to that forward that Marsh is already attacking. So he's kind of doing a combo attack. Okay. All right. You following along? Yeah, so I got far? you. All right. Cool. So that simple flavor. You tap the other one. You're kind of doing a combo attack. Whatever. Um, so let's switch on to Opus 8 Marsh. Uh, another fire marsh also gives the player card advantage by grabbing them another fire character. So this seems to be a reference to like recruiting members to guilds. So okay. in FFTA, you play tactics where you had to you had to like basically buy units, right? More or less, you hire them as mercenaries, yeah. sort of. Yeah. So in FFTA, after you finish a mission, you have a there's a chance that a character will apply to your guild, mm -hmm. and then you get to read over their stats, and then you get to say yes or no. Yeah. Um, so I think this is like kind of a reference to that of like he enters the field, reveal top five, you get add a fire character. It's the chance after every mission that you're going to get a new clan member, mm -hmm. and you're kind of fetching him through that. It okay. has to be fire, which I don't think has anything fancy with that. But, uh-oh, fun lore fact time. So the art for this is original art, beautiful, stunning. Yeah, it is art. really good art. Uh, he also has his butt cheek hanging out for some reason. <laughs> but, um, so fun FFTA lore fact, the card art actually shows both the grimoire that transports them to Evelis, I did something notice. not usually associated with Marsh, but instead Luso, since it plays a more prominent role in FFTA 2. Mm. The sword Marsh has in this card art, and in the Opus 4 art, uh, is actually not found in the game as equipable, uh, equipable gear, but is depicted in an attack that Sid Rendell uses, which we'll get into. Interesting. Um, the sword is associated with judges in FFTA, and while the player never gets the sword in-game, spoilers, there's a bonus ending in which Marsh becomes a judge master. Oh. So it's like... It's weird, because in every single art of Marsh, he has that sword. That's like, a really big... If, like, people joke to bust your sword to see. That thing looks yeah. massive. Oh, yeah, it's like the size of him. But, like, yeah. it's in every single art, and you never see it in game. That's hilarious. That always, like, got me. Uh, and then, once again, the Grimoire. The Grimoire is in the first Tactics, but it doesn't look like that. It mm -hmm. looks like that in Tactics events, too. Okay. Um, but fun little thing. So, next one is... Like, one of my favorite cards of all time. This is the Meta Marsh. This is, yeah, the Meta Marsh. Uh, Opus 11 Marsh, 5 drop 7k. Uh, if you control two FFTA characters, the cost for playing Marsh onto the field is reduced by two. When Marsh enters the field, choose one category FFTA character of cost three or less in your break zone, play it onto the field. So, he doesn't reflect a specific mechanic. Mm -hmm. um, he just kind of synergizes with FFTA. Uh, if you control two or more FFTA cards, uh, Marsh works better with, like, his friends in his clan. You're working with a clan. He's, like, it's kind of like teamwork, you know? Mm -hmm. That's just generally how I'm reading it is, um, like, he works with his friends. He works well in a clan. It's him helping out his clan. Uh, sure. Cool. I don't see why not. Yeah. So this one's, like, it's not great. I think uh, the most, like, simple explanation I have are, like, a simple interpretation is uh, you could revive KO'd allies in FFTA with a Phoenix Down or a Raise, both of which Marsh can do. Okay. But it's not exclusive to him, which is right. why I'm, like, iffy on it. But, yeah. So, uh, any questions so far? No. No, I'm following you. All right, cool. So, next one is... so. Also, the heads up to our viewers, this one's going to be a bit more of, like, an essay. I'm sorry. Yeah, I... <laughs> I'm sorry I didn't let you know after the first character. But uh, this is just me wanting to gush about Final Fantasy lore. How dare you enjoy Final Fantasy, the game series of which we are playing the amazing card game. Yeah, that is true. That is true. So, moving on to the next card. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Mont Blanc. So, Mont Blanc is the first character that Marsh meets when he's dropped into Ivalice. Marsh accidentally gets into a fight with several Bonga, and Mont Blanc comes in to try to help him. Later, he and Marsh form uh, Clan Nutsy, and they work together towards Marsh's goal uh, after Marsh tells him everything. So, the first one is Mont Blanc uh, from Opus 4. Uh, so when Montblanc enters the field, you may search for one card named Marsh, add it to your hand, pay a fire and tap, choose one forward, deal it 2,000 damage. You can only use this ability if you control Marsh. So um, there's actually two other Montblocks, but they're from different titles, so we're not going to be covering them. Yep. So because one's FFTA 2, which he has a small role, and mm -hmm. then he has 12, which I think he has a very small role in 2. But, so Montblanc, as previously stated, is Marsh's first friend in Ivalice and finds him when he's lost in the beginning. Search effect, 
clear reference to that. Yeah, super straightforward. And then the tap effect is a reference to how Mumplex starts when you get him. So he can do basic magic, fire, lightning, and blizzard, which is like kind of characterized in the 2k damage. Yep. It's not a lot, but you know, once he joins your clan, he, you can use him. He deals a little elemental damage. Right. So clearly reflected in the second effect. And then the fact that he's a backup kind of shows his supporting role at the beginning of the game. Yeah. You know, so easy, simple, and clean. You know. Is the way right. that you're making, making me feel, feel tonight. <laughs> anyway, so uh, moving on to the next character and mm -hmm. the next element is Ritz. My favorite types so, of crackers. Yes, yeah. <laughs> I, I've, I still remember, as, when I was a kid, I was like, is she named after the cracker? <laughs> I was like, why, why do they name a character after a cracker? And I still don't know why. But, uh, so Ritz is one of the characters brought into Ivalis with Marsh. Starts a rival clan, uh, aptly named Clan Ritz. Mm -hmm. So Rich associates with uh, Viera and becomes friends with Shara, uh, who's second in command in uh, Clan Ritz. Um, I'm trying to think if I... Oh, uh, she also kind of teaches Marsh uh, how to fight, along with the teacher. Um, she's like kind of a leader sh character when you first meet her. Um, so the first card is a three-drop Fencer FFTA. Uh, characters you control cannot be returned to their owner's hand by an opponent's summons or abilities. If you control a card named Shara, Ritz gains 2k. So, the original Ritz is underwhelming when it comes to lore. Mm -hmm. uh, the characters you cannot you control cannot be returned to their owner's hand by your opponent's summons or abilities. Can be interpreted as Ritz not wanting to return home from Ivalis. But this feels like a stretch. I don't know. Now that I'm kind of <laughs> looking at it, it's maybe not so much, but... That's kind of what I No, I, I kind of, I would interpret it the you, same yeah, way. You yeah, you kind of see that. Yeah. yeah. So the second effect clearly ties into her relationship with Shara. And she has a similar re relationship with Shara as Marsh does to Montblanc. They help each other out. Mm -hmm. uh, also, she serves a stat line and costs with Marsh, which hints at them being equals, uh, which checks out lore-wise. And then um, Ritz, this is my soapbox, Ritz should be job clan leader. Because she's a clan leader. Yeah, fair. And you can recruit her later on, but she should probably be a clan leader. You know, equal opportunity. Yeah, I, um, I would agree. So I think if we ever get another one, we might see clan leader slash fencer. Yeah, um, I would get dual, dual job. Yeah, yeah, me being optimistic about it. Um, and then we're going to move on to the other card, which is Ritz. Uh, the very meta Ritz. Uh, Opus 11 Ritz. 3-drop, 7k fencer. Uh, if you control an FFTA forward other than Ritz, Ritz gains 1k power and haste. When Ritz attacks, choose up to 3 backups you control, activate them. Damage 3, Ritz gains, uh, Ritz cannot be blocked. So, the first effect kind of makes reference to her being leader of a clan. She works better with other FFTA characters. Mm -hmm. The haste may be reference to the fact that Ritz shares uh, job and stats with the Viera race, which is generally have higher speed stats as opposed to the other races of the game. I think that one's a little bit of a stretch, mm. but... Oh, and then the second effect is more uh, analogous of wind cards in the game, and I struggle to find anything it would connect with, specifically the untapping. Yeah. Because the thing is, when you get Ritz, she's a fencer, and then when when you fight her, she's a fencer. She doesn't have any support abilities. And generally, how I read reactivating from a flavor standpoint is, like, healing. So that's why we see a lot of white mages do it. Yeah. And stuff like that. So I think it's a little weird that they gave her that. I assume it, it was for the sake of the game. Yeah, but, for sure. Um, and then her damage 3 may be a reference to a counter attack that fencers can learn, uh, which is called Reflex, which allows them to avoid normal attacks in-game. In the previously mentioned Opus 4 Marsh, blocking seems to be understood as an attack, which would make sense as to why Ritz can dodge the attacks. Uh, even the f fact that the effect is damage 3 may be a reference to the fact that it takes her it takes a while for these characters to learn the ability, including Reflex. Yeah, I would go with that, because yeah. there's no other so, really way of judging time in the game yet. Yeah. We don't have, like, a, oh, if your deck has this many cards, yeah. or... Because how I'm reading damage personally mm -hmm. is damage is, like, progression through the game. Like, progression of time. Yeah. Um, and I think we see that in other cards. I think, uh... Because uh, a lot of them just get stronger as the game goes on, you know? Right. Um... So I, I generally viewed damage as like kind of like a clock mechanic in a way mm -hmm. of like, hey, this is this character older. Sure. Um, so yeah, so that's all for Ritz. Um, love to see more Ritz. Love her. She's great. Um, oh, my soapbox about... Uh, you know, I'm going to hold my theories on for later. But we're going to talk about her pink hair. Um, okay. I'm, I'm going to vent about it. But So the next character is Donnit. 
so Donid is Marsh's brother. He's brought to Ivalis. In the normal world, he doesn't have motor function in his legs, but Ivalis, he has the ability to walk. He initially tried to sabotage Marsh's plan, but is later convinced to help Marsh out, uh, though not through combat. So the first one is two drop Donid, tap, uh, two drop wind forward clan leader. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Especially because he, he's technically a clan, you never fight his clan, so you don't know if he, like, leads a clan. I, I would say much. it's just a bias there at that point. Uh, right. Against right. Ritz. Like, Ritz just got the, the bad R- stick. Yeah, Ritz, Ritz just got the boot. Yeah. So, clan leader, uh, tap, choose one monster, dull it or activate it, 5k forward. So, Marsh is Donid's younger brother and doesn't have the combat prowess that Marsh has, which kind of relates to his power and the cost being less than Martian Ritz. Uh, so, as mentioned previously, Donid tries to sabotage Marsh and does so by luring him into missions, then sending monsters and enemy clan members to halt his progress. He basically calls the monster, explaining his ability to interact with monsters. Okay. We're going to see this on the next card, too. Gotcha. Uh, so, Donid is the head of Clan Donid, kind of technically. Oh, it can be fought in game? Man, I'm dumb. Anyway, so Clan Donid can be fought in game, but Donid acts only as their leader and doesn't fight, which makes it a little odd that he's a forward in this card, but explains the job tag. So, yeah, that's dumb. Yeah, yeah. yeah, give Ritz the clan leader. To be fair, he does because he doesn't fight, he doesn't have a job assigned to him. We don't know what he does. And he never talks about it in game. He's his his clan his job is bastard. Just give he's just give him job him. former cripple. I don't know. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus Christ. Tiny, give him job tiny too. <laughs> <No. laughs> Give him jo- job Marsha's antagonist for exactly three. <laughs> yeah, fights. but like, uh, uh, like that's come the on. thing is it's it's weird. So yeah, I <laughs> yeah. So the next Donid, which is a backup, which I'm very happy about. Okay. Uh, so a four drop backup Donid clan leader. When Donid enters the field, you may search for one job cl- or yeah for one card name Marsh or monster and add it to your hand. Um, okay. Like and then pay a wind tap him when Donate is put from the field in the break zone. Choose one FFTA card in your break zone. Add it to your hand. Okay. So uh, playing a backup makes much more sense for Donate as he's never actually engaged in combat. In combat, uh, his search ability relates to what I mentioned before. He tricks Marsh into several engagements, which speaks to Donate's ability to search March and is able to connect uh, collect monsters for Marsh to fight as well. Um, after deciding to help Marsh, Donate plays a background help in. A background role in helping out in Marsh's clan, which relates to his second ability to be able to fetch back an FFTA character. Uh, I'm going to wait until we get to until we complete mute to uh, talk about uh, the character's reasons for going to the fantasy world because it it is a little funny, and I don't want to keep like the waiters or the listeners listening too long or waiting too long rather. (laughs) Um, So the next character is Mute. Um, So Mute is the cataclysm of the story, brings the grimoire to Marsh's home, bringing himself and his friends into the world of Ivalis. Since he's the catalyst, he receives the most from his transfer to the new world by no longer living in poverty, having his father be successful, and having his dead mother back. So Mute is the antagonist in several ways, but plays a passive role as the child of Prince of Iblis. Uh, or so he can't child talk, though. Huh. Oh, my God. <laughs> I, I, okay, that was actually kind of funny. <laughs> I, I have to give that one, too. <laughs> so uh, Mute, or as my fiancé pokes him means calls him poopy head because of his hair <laughs> the poop emojis in the hair yeah, yeah. the poop emojis i can kind of see it I, I see it i definitely see it but it's like one like of it's reaching things, it's like, but yeah. i really like him i really yeah. like him so i'm biased um so three drop uh backup or ice backup uh prince um with with an ex tag uh, when Mute enters the field, you may search for one card named Citrondel or one card named Remedy and add it to your hand. So this Mute is a backup, which shares a cost with Ritz, Ritz and Marsh, indicating that they're the same age or at least power. Uh, Mute is Ice, the villain color of FFTA. Villain colors are present in most titles in FFTCG. And Ice is associated with the governing body of Ivalis, the palace. So we do have a little, like, kind of... Okay. We, we see this collection of, like, yep. people who are from the palace, who are kind of royalty, are Ice... And then we see clan leaders and general people in Fire and Wind. There's a slight break to that. Yeah. We'll get to it. Um, so while Mute tries to deter Marsh, he doesn't have any combat ability, sending both of his father, Sid, and his serp- s- serpent, servant, servant, Babis, and later his protector, Lednar, to try to stop Marsh. Uh, in the FFTA story, there's occasionally cuts to Mute where he could feel the world being pulled apart. When Marsh breaks the crystals and calls for his father, Sid Rendell, and his mother, Remedy, both of which he can search. So, he searches his parents, 
easy world, flavor. The world takes some damage. Mom, Dad, Mom! the sky is falling. <laughs> <laughs> Basically, like it's the there is a, a call or there's a cut to him. Uh, I think it's after you break this first or second crystal where he's he literally just calls Babas. He's like, this sucks. I hate Mar- Marsh sucks. Like he's like, who's doing this? This sucks. Uh, so the second card is uh, the two drop mute from Opus Eleven. One of my favorite cards in the game. I really like it. Very simple design. Uh, it's not meta. It's not going to be meta for a while, but I still love it. Uh, two drop ice backup mute. Job Prince. Uh, pay a win or pay an ice tap. Put mute into the break zone. Dull and freeze all the backups the opponent controls. You can only use this ability during your turn, and if your opponent controls five or more backups. Mute, being the Prince of Ivalis, has control over the Judges of Ivalis and has much authority o- over Ivalis, but only uses it to suppress Marsh's clan. This seems to be the power over backups, being able to suppress Marsh's whole clan once it's fully assembled. Hmm. You know, it's like he... Because he really starts moving a lot of things into action once Marsh yeah, starts doing stuff. pretty narrow-minded. Uh, yeah. Not a whole lot else going on right yeah, now. Yeah, so it's... So he's specifically trying to stop by, like, cutting off uh, access to towns and stuff like that. Which, to me, it reads as, like, being able to shut off the backups. Yeah. So, um, That's cool. Yeah, yeah. Cute little lore thing. So, we're going to take a little break to talk about uh, the three characters. So, or the four characters, rather. So, Marsh gets friends. Fine. Ritz gets hair. Donnie <laughs> is, literally can't use his legs. And then he confronts Marsh, and he's like, I can use my legs. Yeah. And Marsh is like, this is escapism. And I mean, it's, it's the one thing everyone memes on in FFTA, but it is, when you play it, it is a little funny for, like, a character to be like, I literally can walk now, and you want to take this away from me, and Marsh is like, yeah, I do want to take this away from you. Makes Marsh look like the bad guy for it, a bit. It really does, and, like, I, I'm mad that they didn't explore that concept in FFTA, mm-hmm. or, spoilers, they don't really explain it, or they don't really explore it in FFTA too. Because Luso is just like, I just want to get back to my aunt at the end. Um, so yeah. it's it's kind of dumb. And the mute's the same thing. Of Like, he lost his mother. And Marsh is like, yeah, that sucks, bro. Uh, I'm going to kill your mom, and we're going to leave. Like, Yeah, that's pretty harsh. Yeah, it's, it's, well, it's pretty harsh. It's kind of like there's a Ghost in the Shell episode yeah. um, where, uh, long story short, one character connects with, with a brain case mm-hmm. she finds. And inside that brain case are a bunch of people living and rewatching the same tragic movie with a happy ending. Yeah. And like they all st- like they're all clearly someone else, like other people's consciousness. Yeah. That have been staying there and living their lives inside this this brain. Yeah. Sh- like in a shared reality, uh, and the host is like, these people are enjoying themselves now. They didn't like their lives before. Yeah. Why do you want to shut that down? And- why do you want to kill me and take that away from them? Yeah. And she's like, because you convinced them this is something better than what they had, but really they're trapped here and they can't leave and they kind of hurt other people by leaving their lives behind where yeah. there are people who cared about them. Yeah. It's, it's kind of like, in a way, like the Matrix, you know? Like, a little bit, yeah. These, like, they made this, like, world that's pretty good for people and then it's just like, okay... Do you want to disconnect everybody and throw them into a dystopia? Yeah. Or do you want them to stay in the Matrix? So it's, in my opinion, like, that's a very interesting aspect of, like, kind of the isekai uh, genre. Yeah. Isekai, for those who don't know, is, uh, like, going into video games or movies. Like, being pulled into another world that isn't your own. Being pulled into another world, I think, is, like, a direct translation. Mm -hmm. Um, And... It's kind of funny because Tactics Events was really before the before Isekai's really blew up. Um, yeah. Which is, well, I said Dot Hack was still I think yeah. it was around around Dot, the same Dot time. Dot Hack was uh, just before, if I remember yeah. correctly. The original Dot Hack manga I think was oh god probably like a year before this, maybe mm-hmm. or it might have actually been later. But anyway, so it's one of the early Isekai's. Um, and then once again, before we go any further, I'm going to talk about. Actually, no, I'm going to wait for until we talk about Chara for the Ritz thing. Okay. But Ritz is also kind of like a dumb thing of like, my hair's not white anymore. I'm happy with that. It's like... I like my appearance. Because the thing is, she, far and beyond, fights Marsh the most out of all of them. Which is really like, what's like what's the motivation? Like, how vain and shallow are you? Or is yeah. there something deeper? Like, now yeah. I really got to know. Her, her issue is that people make fun of her for it, and that's it. And it's like, okay, but once again, I have my theory. We'll get to that okay. once we get to Chara. All right. So, okay, so moving on, so we've got, uh, 
Where's your the mouse? No. Uh, hey, there you okay, are. Cool. Okay. So there's Sid Rendell. Uh, Sid Rendell is Mute's father. After his wife Remedy dies, he falls on hard times and turns to alcohol to try to cure his depression. While he isn't present during the travel to Ivalis, Mute brings him in by imagining the ideal version of his father, uh, an extremely noble and well-renowned judge master. Uh, while the Sidrindel in Ivalis isn't the real Sidrindel, he has vague memories of the real Sid and even breaks away from the palace to help Marsh. So Sidrindel is a four-drop ice forward, judge master, 8k power. Uh, if you control card name Remedy, Sidrindel gains 1,000 power. If your opponent's forward enters the field, uh, if the opponent doesn't pay one, draw that forward. So, once again, going back to the ice is the palace mm -hmm. uh, representation. Yep. Uh, Sid Rendell's part of the judge program, which reports to the palace, at least for the first half of the game. Right. And, um, yeah, so it, it, that checks out. Uh, so Sid, being a judge master, is associated with the palace and shares the ice element uh, with Mutant Remedy. Uh, Sid is a 4-drop 8k, 1 more CP, and 1k more power than the protagonist, showing his age and the ability as judge master through gameplay elements. More experienced, yeah. Yes, which... I, which Mwah, love. Uh, Sid is, at least in the early game, receives orders from Remedy and is closely associated with her being Mute's father, bringing near... Being uh, near your spouse. Being near your spouse gives a 1k buff in real life, too. That works uh, out. Yeah, checks out, yeah. Out. yeah. Uh, being a judge, Sid is able to hand out red and yellow cards to people breaking the law or be able to detain them to stop them from fighting, which relates to his tax ability of forcing uh, forwards to enter tapped. The one is the character following the law uh, to avoid the yellow card, which acts as a slap on the wrist. Okay. Yellow cards don't really do anything to you. They're just annoying. Okay. Um, red cards will remove them from combat, which I, I kind of wish we got to see more red card, but we'll get into that. Mm -hmm. Who knows? We don't know what FFT has in the future. So first card's a pretty good for flavor. I yeah. really like it. That's solid. And then we got the second one, Sid Rendell, 4-drop 6k forward, also a Judge Master. Uh, if you control card rem card name Remedy, Sid Rendell gains 2k power. Uh, opposing forwards entering the field will not trigger any auto abilities, and this applies to their own abilities and abilities triggered by your opponent's forwards entering the field. So, That's a red card. Yeah. That's a red card. So uh, Sid gets buffed if you control Remedy, which may be consistent with Sid Rendell cards going forward. Um, being able to restrict ETBs ties into being a judge in a way mm -hmm. a player can look at uh, look at it as the judge said putting down a law that ETBs cannot be triggered. Yep. Judges can control laws. They could put in laws. They could remove laws. Um, so your, once oh, so it's your town ordinance in an Animal Crossing. Yeah. Yeah. Literally, yeah. Basically. Yeah. So uh, while judges play a passive role in the game, giving out yellow cards for law, laws broken and judge points for laws followed, Sid is the only judge that the player can play uh, as with the corrupt judges being the enemies in the post game. So he he is playable uh, and. He doesn't do much, honestly. <laughs> He's actually a pretty bad unit. Uh, so are all the extra units. With, I think with the exception of, like, Ritz. But, mm -hmm. um, so, yeah. So, good representation for my boy, Sid. Sure. Love my boy, Sid. Yeah. Um, and I'm very, very excited for cards going forward. Um, so, moving on to the next one is Remedy. Uh, Queen Remedy is Mute's mother in Ivalis and Queen of Ivalis. While she looks... Uh, she looks as Mute remembers her. Queen Remedy is actually the power of the Grimoire given form. She protects Mute to keep Ivalis a real place and keeps him and his friends within the world by giving them what they want. I knew there was some sort yeah. of... I was like, what does the Grimoire get? Like, Grimoire is usually a dark thing that saps power. So, like, yeah. what's... Okay. Yeah, so, that checks out. So, Remedy, 3 drops 7k forward, uh, job Queen. If you control card name Sid Rendell, Re uh, Remedy gets 1k power. Um... When the opponent plays a character onto the field, other than from his or her hand, your opponent doesn't pay two, break it. Uh, so Remedy's ice power is shared with all the palace characters. Um, Remedy gets a boost with Sid, which is in flavor with early FFTA, in which she usually sends Sid to handle Marsh and his clan. Mm -hmm. And then Remedy acts as the antagonist throughout the game and actively fights against the characters who came in from the outside world, leaning on the second effect. Right. She's protecting Ivalis against and put punishing them from coming from the real world. So mm -hmm. you're kind of punishing these, um, these like, foreign... Uh, they get what they want, but they're yeah. gonna, there's, it's going to cost them. Yeah, or it's if you want to fight against it, you have you, you get punished yeah. for it, which right. is ultimately kind of how Remini acts. Because, like, her whole thing is she's like, I gave them what they wanted. Mute has a perfect life. Why are they fighting this? And it's... So it plays into her general mm -hmm. flavor. Yeah, um, that's cool. And the second card, three-drop queen... Uh, or 3-drop 7k ice forward, job queen. 
When your opponent searches for one or more cards, your opponent discards one card from their hand. When your opponent discards a card from their hand due to your summons or abilities, you may search for one card named Sidrindel, add it to your hand. This effect will trigger once per turn. So, Remedy's first effect uh, is probably a reference to the previously mentioned bringing people from outside of the world into the world, um, just, you know, making them discard one. Uh, she gets rid of something brought in that isn't brought naturally by making the opponent discard, and then sends, sends Sid to deal with it. Mm -hmm. So it's like almost a direct translation. Um, yeah, so straightforward. Yeah. Remedies the big bad. There, in my opinion, and we're probably going to tackle this on the Custom Cards episode, there needs to be another Remedy card. And Remedy is also up for having the multiple jobs. Okay. I, I'm not going to explain it because it's very spoilery, and I do want people to play this game. But... Well, I already said she's the Grimoire given form, but like I want to see the Grimoire form of her in the game at some yeah. point, and I really hope that we see it. We gotta uh, go back to the Remedy. We gotta go it's back. A, it's a song reference. Really? Is there a song called Back to the Remedy? Well, no, Remedy by Seether. Oh, oh. Yeah. I Seether? Seether. Seether. They wrote a, they wrote a, it was a lot of, um, crap, what genre are they? They're like a alt-rock from, you know, like, early to mid 2000s. Are you, are you sure you're not thinking of see these? No, see there. See, like, yeah, I have, I have see this. these. See there. See these nuts. God, God damn it, Ty. <laughs> ah. Anyway. <laughs> you can show me after. I, no, I, I was, yeah, I see, yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, right. so, cool. So, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> so, the next character is Babis, who is one of my favorites. Uh, so, Babis is a servant of the royal family and is usually taking care of Mute. He takes orders from Remedy and antagonizes Marsh throughout the game. So he's a two drop, two uh, two drop five k forward ice and job rune seeker. When a forward the opponent controls attacks, choose one forward the opponent controls. If the opponent doesn't pay one, freeze it. So Babis, despite being an antagonist, isn't particularly strong, which shows in his cost and stat line. Uh, while he's not li oh, oh yeah, while he's able to use some magic, it's not very powerful and usually just inflicts debuffs or halves health with gravity esque effects. Babis enforces the rules of the palace, which is the inspiration for his tax effect, and ties his color uh, to the other denizens of the palace. Straightforward, easy card. So dumb rabbit dog yeah. thing. So, he's a no mu new mo new mo. I never actually learned Numu? how it pronounced. New mo new mo new mo. I don't know. Whatever. But I like he's he actually has a pretty big role, which is why I'm a little sad we only have one card of him so far because I really like him and I think they could give him other fun effects. I think he'd be a really good backup. But yeah. Uh, you know, maybe sometime in the future. So, all right, I'm seeing how much is left. All right, cool. Um, so the next character, and this is what I'm going to explain a little bit more. Um, this is gonna, I'm going to explain my theories on Final Fantasy Tactics. Okay. But first, we're going to tackle Shara. So Shara is Ritz's right-hand woman in Clan's Rit, Clan Ritz, and her first friend in Ivalis. While she doesn't hold a large role in the story, she supports Ritz and helps her through her moral quandary on whether or not to return home. She's, like, kind of with Ritz in the beginning, but as Marsh kind of helps... She was like, hey, maybe you should consider it. Um, so she is a one-drop archer, or one-drop 3k wind archer. Uh, when Shara enters the field, choose one forward the opponent controls, deal it 3,000 damage. If you control a card named Ritz, deal it 6,000 damage instead. That's pretty good. Or Shara, was. Yeah. It, it, I remember it saw some play in uh, wind ping. Yeah. Uh, Shara is wind, which she shares with both uh, which she shares both with Ritz, being part of her clan, and most other Viera. Uh, arches, archers in FFTA trade damage for range. Uh, they can't deal tons of damage right off the bat, but are able to safely chip away from a distance, much like her ping of 3k damage. Mm -hmm. Shara relies on Rich, Ritz, explaining her boosted damage if she shares a field with Ritz. Uh, archers are also rather fragile, indicated by her low power. Right. So, um, I, I feel like this is mostly flavor for the archers, mainly. Mm -hmm. You know, you deal damage safely, um, I think there's only, like, one or two reaction effects that actually sure. affect archers. You know, she's pinging. Yeah. Uh, and then archers generally have low HP. No yeah. armor, because why would you wear armor when yeah. you're running and shooting? Exactly, exactly. So, uh, the next Shara, which I much prefer. So, uh, as mentioned before, or two drop, uh, wind forward, 4k power, job archer. I'm, I'm probably frustrating people by saying the order of the card stats differently every time. I'm sorry, but Shara. <laughs> uh, so 
As Shara enters the field, choose one card named Ritz in your break zone and add it to your hand. When a category FFTA character other than Shara enters your field, place one Viera counter on Shara. Tap, remove one Viera counter from Shara. Choose one F category FFTA character. It gains this character cannot be chosen by your opponent's summons or abilities until end of turn. Uh, so, as mentioned before, Shara and Ritz are very close, which is characterized in Shara being able to bring Ritz back from the break zone. And then the Viera counter and the ability to protect other FFTA characters is a little out of the blue. So while Viera can be white mages, and Shara can too, she stays as an archer, which lacks any way to protect other units. As an archer, she can learn block arrows, and as a sniper, the advanced archer, auto-regenerate, neither of which protects others. Yeah, it's pretty... So, yeah. yeah. It's, I, I think you could argue that it's, like, kind of her talking to the other characters. I this, guess. This is a bit of a stretch, yeah. So... Whatever yeah. card game. Yeah, it, it's like kind of a card game mechanic more so. Uh, but she's not really a protector. But at the same time, there's no other card that would have that effect. Mm -hmm. So, I don't know. Might as well give it to her. Yeah. Okay. So for a little bit of a break of explaining the cards, here's my big thing about Shara and Ritz. Mm -hmm. So Ritz, Ritz doesn't... Ritz seemingly doesn't get anything by coming to the New World. She just gets new co hair color, right? Right. So my theory generally, is... And once again, this is just my theory. I'm not saying... Th this is a game theory. Um, so my interpretation... This is what I picked up on my most recent playthrough. Is that when in Ivalis, Ritz is able to be uh, out and proud. And to basically be... Uh, to not beat around the bush. Like, come out as gay. Okay. And Shara it may be a romantic figure for her to be someone who helped her come out of the closet. Okay. Um, I, can, I can see that. that's originally why she doesn't want to, why Ritz doesn't want to go back. And that might be why Ritz decides to help Marsh in the end is because she realizes I don't have to hide myself. I don't yeah. have to be ashamed yeah, of my white hair. Yeah, this is something hair. I can have in the real world, too. This is something I can have in the real world, too, even if it's going to be harder for me. And that's, Okay. So I, I feel like it's a bit of a stretch, and I don't know if it's intended, but in my opinion, that's how I read it. I mean, it. I, I'm, like, I'm going to yeah. read it like that now because it makes yeah. me feel like Ritz is a deeper character. Yeah. Otherwise, that seems really shallow and hollow. On my most recent playthrough, I realized how much Shara and Ritz talk about... Uh, talk about you know, their lives, mm -hmm. and talk about, like, you know, because uh, she says, I consider you a Viera uh, in the end. Mm -hmm. So I think, like, that may have been a reference. Like, it's... It's it's vague, I, but it's got enough it's, substance to it. I, I'm not even sure if there's enough substance to it, but I, to me, it's weird that she, like, Rich just goes from ashamed of her hair to proud of her hair, despite nothing being related to her hair, but she finds um, a lot of accompaniment uh, or she becomes accompanied by a lot of female figures, little female or powerful female figures in the Viera, mm -hmm. which we also see in Final Fantasy XIV, and she becomes more confident. So, like to me at least, I always kind of read that as her like kind of coming out of the closet, yeah, being more comfortable as, with herself, yeah, learning coming out about of like, sexuality. So yeah, okay, yeah. So that's my fun little uh, that's my fun little proposal. That's my fun okay. little thing. Um, yeah, I, no, I'll 100 percent back that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So yeah, so that's my fun little theory. Cool. This is the real reason I wanted to talk about this. <laughs> we went through the real... 16 pages of yeah. notes just to get to that. Yeah, has it been 16 pages? I don't know. Um, oh, is it all... I don't see a page counter. So, oh, 17. Yeah, wow. 17, oh, ooh, yeah. Oh, these... Well, the cards are taking up a good chunk of the notes. Yeah. So anyway, so that's my theory about Shara and Ritz. Uh, it makes me like Ritz a little bit more, so that's why I like it. You know, just kind of coming out of the closet. Like, it's... Um, Gives her a little bit more depth instead yeah. of just, like, I don't like my hair. And also, I don't know what the original Japanese translation says. Um, and I assume it's much of the same, but I don't know. Yeah, that might actually be a good point, because they might have, like, you know, localized the Western version and yeah. might have, like, toned down some stuff. Yeah, but at the same time, in the, you know, Japanese uh, culture hasn't been, as far as I know, and feel free to correct me in the comments, isn't super um, liberal in that way. So that makes me like kind of question. I don't know. Big shrug for me. I don't yeah, know either. Yeah. So big shrug. So if anybody, if anybody reading this, played tactics events in Japanese and knows the difference and knows the changes. Yeah, the, the uh, social if, context would be relevant. If there yeah. is something that we didn't get in the English uh, translation, please tell me. Yeah. I'd be more than happy to know. Um, but talking about knowing, no, no. Uh, back to the cards. Nono is Montblanc's brother and helps Marsh and his clan out as a gadgeteer, uh, but just sets up Marsh 
up for exotic wares. Okay. That's basically just rare items. Pretty cool. Um, so three drop, Moogle backup, no, no. Um, when a forward you control attacks, choose one backup you control and activate it. So, I love this card. Yeah, I, I do adore this card. Uh, no, no plays an extremely minor role and helps out Marsh by being able to get Marsh new items in the shops. He supplies Marsh and his clan after they do tasks and missions for him, which translates well to his effect. Marsh goes out and Nono supplies him when Marsh comes back. So, yep. yeah, it's very simple, very straightforward. Like I said, he doesn't really have a role in the story, but there's still that teeny bit of flavor to mm -hmm. him. Um, so the next card is Zell. Um, Zell's a hermit that's fighting against the palace as a manufacturer of anti-laws. So while not much of a fighter, he helps Marsh avoid authority and punishment. I don't know why he's a forward. So Zell is a two-drop... Uh, 5k forward wind job hermetic weird yeah no that's right uh, so hermetic. when your opponent summon casts the summon activate all forwards you control so uh, Ezel pay, plays a background role for most of the game but does come in to fight for Marsh he mirrors Babis uh, being an agent of anti-authority while being about as strong so he shares a style line and a cost with Babis which yeah. I thought was kind of cute yeah. they kind of occupy that this kind of same um, kind of the other sides of the coin. An anti-authority versus an authority figure. Sure. Um, and then Azel is constantly aware of who is following him and who is trying his best to arrest him. His auto-ability to activate forwards when the opponent uses a summon shows his paranoia and alertness to something that can harm him. Yeah, that sounds pretty apt. It's a little bit of a stretch from the story, but that's how I'm reading no, it. No, I, I would... Uh, that's... Yeah. That sounds like it's pretty... It checks out. Because I remember when I was writing this, I wasn't very confident in it. And now that I'm reading it back, I'm like, yeah, no. Like, that works. Like, he's very conscious. Like, there's a bit where uh, judges are following him, and he's talking to Marsh. And he's like, by the way, you guys can come out now. You know, that general trope. Yep. Like, he knows when people are kind of around the corner from him. Uh, so, we went through almost every character. Is there a character you think is missing? Yeah. I'm trying to think of who, though. Okay. I'm, we're going to play this game uh, until it hits... 48 minutes, so... So, what? like, 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Okay, what character's missing? <sighs> also, I'm not talking about the summons. Um, the yeah, no, I, I think, yeah. yeah. Um, I feel just, like we're missing a female character. A flavor. I wish they had flavor, though. We need... I, I don't know. Uh, I got nothing here. So, we're talking about my boy, Lednar! <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, so, you, meant, yeah, you uh, mentioned them earlier. Yeah, so... I save my favorite for last. Lenar Twem is a character created by Queen Remedy and mutes imagination specifically to be the perfect antagonist to Marsh. Uh, Lenar acts above the law and cannot be beaten traditionally unless he is put under restriction by Judge. Lenar is Mute's idealized version of himself, which we see in the name. Lenar Twem is Mute Rendell backwards. Yep. It's very cute and whatever. So, first Lenar is Opus 4 Lenar. Two drop. 5k fire forward um job bisk matar when lednar blocks or is blocked if your opponent doesn't pay two lednar cannot be broken this turn when lednar is chosen by a summon or ability of your opponent if your opponent does not pay two lednar cannot be broken this turn uh so lednar is mute's ideal self and something that comes becomes clear throughout the story that he looks up to marsh who becomes the first friend in his real in the real world. While he's not as strong as Marsh, he shares a color with him. Uh, while this Lednar isn't particularly powerful, he comes with an annoying and very flavorful effect. Lednar, when Marsh fights him, cannot be knocked out and can never go below zero health unless a judge restricts his power. Unless the player, essentially, pays the judge to CP, Lednar keeps his protection. Yeah. So, um... That's super cool. Uh, I'll talk about Bisk Matar if I don't explain it in the other card. I forget if I did. But yeah, so he's... he's You only run into him like twice, but the thing is he's this very imposing character. Mm -hmm. He has all these abilities that no other character in the game can use. Yeah. He's very powerful. He's very cool. I love him. I loved him ever since I was a kid. I love his design. I love the Bisk Matar symbol. Mwah. Great. I, no, and also, he was a really fun card. I love using Lednar back in Yeah, that was a really... It was a card you played a lot. Yeah, I, I found every way I could. Because I remember I... <laughs> I remember I played a deck called uh, Death and Tactics, which yeah. was Fire Ice, and it was just taxes. And very fun deck. I miss it a lot. But, um, yeah. So Isn't that the one that got stolen? No, no. I, I got Knights. Lost it. Oh, Knights no, got okay. stolen. Um, so we're going to move on to the next Lednar, uh, which is Opus 13 Lednar. 
I was over the moon when this card came out. Um, so three drop multi element forward, uh, fire wind, 8k, uh, job bisque matar. Uh, when Ludnar enters the field due to your cast, place one fortune counter on Ludnar. If a fortune counter is placed on Ludnar, Ludnar cannot be broken. Discard two cards, remove all fortune counters from Ludnar. Each player can use this ability. Uh, this Lednar shares a cost with Ritz and Marsh, and even has the combination of their colors. This represents how Mute looks up to both Ritz and Marsh, to which uh, his ideal self pulls the elements from them as well. Okay. Uh, Lednar, in-game, is no one to scoff at as he does good damage, reflected in being over curve as an 8-drop 3k. Or, yeah, an 8k 3-drop. 8-drop 3k. I was like, Gosh, wow, that's a really bad My, my dyslexia curve. hard kicked in for a second. <laughs> Uh, the fortune counter represents his previously mentioned invincibility. The only way for a player to rid Lednar of his invincibility is to sacrifice cards in their hand, which thematically is the judge taking away his power with the law, and laws are actually represented as cards, which I have a little extra flavor. Well, so, and cards in your hand are much more taxing than paying two. Yeah. So, exactly. like, using backups to pay two, no big deal. Use... Using cards in your hand to pay, that hurts. Yeah, you're essentially, you basically have to pay four for his ability. Yeah. Which I love. But, so yeah, so that's Lednar. Um, Biskmatar, fun fact, is, um, it's a weird translation, or it's like a different weird that's kind of used for like homunculus. Okay. Or like a fake person. Interesting, so it, it's, mannequin almost? Yeah, kind of like a mannequin. And it, it makes sense, because he is this kind of combination between Martian Ritz, like he's... Uh, a very interesting character. I love him. I love him so much. I really wish we got more of him in the original tactics. He was a very imposing character. He had a custom sprite. Everything about him was awesome. I love Lednar. I love Tactics Advanced. I love Final Fantasy TCG. And that's actually it. Uh, maybe okay. We might revisit this if we get more FFTA cards. Uh, maybe I'll just turn this into tweets where I'll just tweet out like, hey, here's the flavor or something. Yeah. But we'll figure it out, and then we'll hop on to other Final Fantasies as we keep going. Yeah, um, and uh, I mean, I still want to play games together on stream, yeah. and, like stream Final Fantasy games together and beat them. Yeah. Because I think that'd be really fun. Uh, it gives us an excuse to play through. We can beat the games that I keep losing save data for. <laughs> I swear, my PS2 memory cards were first party, and they were just so... I, I just kept... They kept dying on me. I don't know what happened. Mm -hmm. Every time, it's like, oh, yeah... I have, like, you know, five more hours of gameplay left, and it's just like, oh, your save's corrupt. I'm like, why, though? <laughs> why, though? Okay, so do you think you have a good understanding of FFTA now? Oh, yeah. And now you get the flavor? Yeah. Um, I mean, you just got the gameplay. I mean, it's a tactics yeah. game, so yeah, I know how that works already. Yeah. So, so. Hey, cool. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I like this. I'm more than happy to do more. Oh, I, yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I've played a bunch. We could even probably lump one, two, and three together, because there's not too many characters between them. Maybe. Um, but if there's a particular Final Fantasy you want us to cover, if there's a Final Fantasy that you're like, I have no idea what the flavor is, um, leave a comment, let us know, hit us up on Twitter. Um, like I said, I, I mentioned the ones that I've played. I'm progressing through the rest of them now. Uh, maybe one day we'll do a two hour or three hour special where I go over all the Final Fantasy fourteen characters because there is <laughs> we have to do that by expansion a lot. dude we couldn't yeah we yeah. there's no way that would be the, that'd be longer than our meta videos it would be which we have to do another one by the way yeah but um yeah so if you want to see more of this leave a comment if there's a specific game you want me to cover um I'm more than happy to even if I have to play it I think the my only exception to this rule is going to be Final Fantasy eleven. Um, well, that... it's apparently hard to play right now. Although, about three years ago, Square Enix staff uh, told us that they're open. In some interview I read, they said they were open to making FF11 a single player experience. Oh, yeah. yeah but I, and I posted about that in our, our group chat. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, yeah but we haven't heard anything it. since, and Pandemic yeah. probably threw a massive wrench in that if it was yeah. even being worked on at all yet. So, um, if anybody thinks that they should still do that, um, Tweet at them. I was going to say, I guess tweet at them or message. I, I don't know who to Figure contact about that, but, like, I guess it's still worth looking into. I still want to play. I liked 11, the, like, 20 minutes of it I played on a friend's account. Yeah. So, like, I'm yeah. willing to give it a shot again. Because my friends that do play MMOs have told me, like, they're like, if you play it, let me know, and I'll let you hop on my account, because there's no real reason to play through it alone now. Yeah. So, maybe one day I'll do it. Maybe. As, especially if they do a single-player... Hell, even if they even did uh, what they did for Final Fantasy 15, where it was mm -hmm. like the mobile version, I'd like that. 
Yeah. Where because I just want to know the story because I heard the story is not like fantastic, but it has a lot of cool characters. We get Prince yeah. and Shintoto, and I know some of their backstory through the uh, wiki pages. Mm-hmm. But the thing is, you have other characters like Kamlanot and Eldnarsh, and like have all these crazy abilities in the card game. I'd love to know what they do or like how it's reflected. But, oh yeah, um, yeah. We're already up on fifty-five minutes. That's uh, not bad. We're probably gonna edit this. Down we can cut a little. I can cut a little yeah. bit down too. Yeah. But uh, thanks for listening. Um, I don't think we have any big events coming up outside of Bahamut Brawl Two, which oh, we, yeah, read, uh, we have Summoner's Cup in January. Yeah, Summoner's Cup in January. Um, so, so hopefully this this video should be up before then. Um, but if you are interested in Bahamut Brawl Two, please sign up. There's a lot of very good prizes. There's a lot of very good players. Yep. There's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun. We have uh, a contest that we're throwing into the ring, a poo poo art contest. You Hell get a yeah. special play mat, which is currently under development and will be ready soon. Um, so, Don't forget, you need to buy your Bahamut Brawl tickets ahead of time. Yes. So make sure to jump on that because they're already uh, a third of the way sold out. Yes. And it's only we, been up for like a month, not even. We will be putting the link in the description below. Um, sign up. It's going to be a lot of fun. If you can make it out, please do. It's All the previous Bahamut Brawls have been great. Yeah, well, been, all one. All one. Well, the reunion events. The reunion events have been great too. Yeah, the so, road to Bahamut yeah. Brawl has been a very awesome and interesting road to travel. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, swing through, uh, say hi, uh, give me your foil Ludnars and, uh, <laughs> foil foil art Ludnars and... Foil poopoos. Foil poopoos, yes. All yeah. right, uh, thank you all. Goodbye. Bye. Pause. Is it? Okay. I'm gonna turn off the heat. Okay. Yeah, it's gotten hot. It's gotten hot in here. So I'm taking all my air clothes your clothes. I am getting so hot, I wanna take my clothes off! <laughs> <laughs>